Hello, my name is Max Zorin, and thank you for joining me tonight for the Together Alone series from the School of Music at Penn State. So for tonight's program, I chose two very special pieces. The first one is by J.S. Bach. It's his first sonata for solo violin in G minor. And the second one is a piece that was actually written for my dad in 1984 by the Russian-Israeli composer Joseph Dorfman. And the piece is called The Enchanted Klezmer. So these two pieces are very different, but there's something that connects them. So Bach, as you know, is the most influential composer in the history of Western music. And he wrote the six sonatas and partitas around 1720. So it's worth noting that this is music that is 300 years old uh, this year. And it is part of every violinist's life and remains also a staple of uh, the solo violin repertoire till today. I recently heard Yo-Yo Ma speak about Bach because he recorded for the third time the six cello suites. And, and I really liked how he described the music of Bach how it brings a, a certain sense of timelessness, of infinity, but more importantly, and especially today, a sense of empathy and a sense of humility, despite the fact that he wrote such great masterpieces. So this sonata has four movements. It starts with an adagio, that sounds a little bit like a, a prayer, and it's followed by a fugue, the third movement is a Siciliano, which is a, a nice little Baroque dance. And it ends with a presto, which is very virtuosic and, and, and kind of fun to play. So, uh, so here it is, Bach Sonata number one.
So when I catch my breath, I thought I'm going to talk a little bit about the next piece. Now, Joseph Dorfman met my dad when he was seven years old in Odessa, Ukraine. He was walking to the Stolarsky School of Music, accompanied by his mother, and so was my dad. He happened to notice him, noticed his violin, and approached him. That's My dad just told me that the other day, and, and asked him, Oh, you, you, you play the violin? He says, yes. Are you going to this Stolarski school? He answers, yes. And then he replied, great. We'll be friends forever. And that was the case. In fact, they were friends forever until uh, 2006, when unfortunately Dorfman uh, passed away. Now, Joseph Dorfman was... Uh, dedicated his life and work to the preservation of ancient musical traditions stemming from the Jewish cultures. But in the context of, uh, of uh, modern musical uh, language. So you might wonder, what is a klezmer? Maybe you've never heard of that uh, before. So a klezmer, in essence, is a Jewish fiddler in this particular context. But the klezmer is also a musical tradition that's stemming from uh, from the Ashkenazi Jews or the Eastern European uh, Jews. And uh, those were professional musicians that would live in the, you know, in the villages and they would, they would used to be very good and they would be playing in different kinds of services and events and they had their own style and personalities. And, and so those are called the klezmers. Um, now, Dorfman was a very spiritual person, uh, just like Bach. And I think this is one of the things that is important and connects them, because in each of these pieces, there's a certain quest to, to reach out to the divine. From my own personal uh, non-religious uh, views, 
uh, I, I consider art, music, and science to be the language of God. Science explained to us, you know, the nature of who we are and how things work. And well, well, music and art, that's, uh, that's the gift of, of, of communication, of language, of emotions and, and of love. Dorfman's music, however, brings in a different socio-cultural background. It's the sound of the Jewish experience that we hear. It's not just uh, a melodic line, which is there too. Um, it's we, we hear we hear the sounds of prayers, of Yiddish folk songs, of uh, the wailing wall of Jerusalem. But we also sound, uh, we also hear fragments of. Of, of fear. We hear the fragments of despair and, and injustice and persecution. All of that is portrayed in that, in that music. That piece, however, ends with a, a strong you know, cry for help uh, derived from, from, a, from a Yiddish song, but there is always a sense in there for, for hope. So that's a little bit the, the background of, of this music. Um, and so I thought it would be interesting to juxtapose these two composers to, tonight and, and see how they would share the sense of, of humanity. So hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you.